When you launch Ardor for the first time, you will be greeted with this screen. If you want to change the size of how Ardor looks, you can do so with the GUI and font scaling menu here. Once you've read what's on screen, click forward to continue. Here you can select a folder for Ardor to store your new sessions by default. Keep in mind you can make a new Ardor session wherever you like, this just makes it easier to store your projects in one place. Once you've chosen your folder, click forward. In this section, Ardor is asking you what to do about monitoring live audio for recording. If you select this option, Ardor will not play audio as it's being recorded, which is ideal if you have an audio interface that does this for you already, or if you're using a microphone close to your speakers and you don't want feedback. If you select this option, Ardor will automatically playback audio as it is being recorded, which is great for hearing effects in real time and is usually the preferred option in most use cases. After you've chosen your preferred option, click forward. Here you can tell Ardor to provide an extra monitoring section, which is a panel that lets you listen to your mix in different ways without making changes to the mix itself. This panel is similar to what you might see on large mixes in a production studio. I would recommend turning this on because it can prove to be quite useful at times and it doesn't get in the way of your session if you don't use it. Once you've made your choice, click forward. If you're worried you made some wrong choices during setup, don't panic. All of these settings can be changed later in Ardor's preferences. Now that that's out of the way, click apply. It's time to make your first session. When you make a new session in Ardor, you'll be prompted with this screen where you can choose where your session will be saved and give it a name. Note that the folder selected by default is the one we set earlier. You can also select a template for your new session, which comes in real handy when you end up making your own templates. Once you've given your session a name, click open. Last page, I promise. This is where you configure the audio for Ardor so you can actually hear what you're doing. On Windows, port audio will probably be your only option, so just stick with that. If you're using a jack audio server, then select jack from this list. If you are on Windows and you use an audio interface with its own ACO drivers, then select ACO from the driver menu. Otherwise, just stick with the default option. For the input device and output device menus, select whichever option is most relevant to you. This should usually be your normal speakers or the name of your audio interface if you use one. Now onto the sample rate. It's best to keep this the same when dealing with multiple sessions, because if you load a session at a different sample rate to what it was made in, then it will sound out of tune and weird. It's usually best to stick with either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. I almost always go with 48 kilohertz just to be safe, but it doesn't make any audible difference. Buffer size usually depends on your use case and your computer's processing power. A higher number means more processing time, which is good for intense sessions that use a lot of synths and layers, but comes at the cost of a noticeable, noticeable delay, delay when, when playing, playing audio, audio which, is which is awful, awful for recording, for recording with. with. A lower buffer size is good for recording or performing live because it means much less delay when playing audio. However, this can lead to bad pops and glitches if your CPU isn't strong enough to process the audio quickly. I recommend starting at 256 samples, then going lower if your computer isn't struggling, or higher if it is. I'm going to go with 128 samples for now. These are the only options you should ever need to worry about for now, so go ahead and click start when you're ready. Now it's time to navigate the interface.